We're Tegan and Sarah, and this is How It Got Better. We grew up in Calgary, which is in the province of Alberta, which is in the country of Canada. The sort of perception of Calgary is that it's a bit more right-leaning or conservative. We were really, really boyish as little kids. I mean, we cut our hair off to look like our dad. I think people either assumed we would grow out of that or, or that was, we were just boys. They would pay us to dress in, in dresses <laughs> when we would do family photos. And so I think we always knew that we were tomboys and we liked calling each other brother and we liked playing with boys' toys. Even though we knew we were different, we were okay with it. But I can remember the transition from like age 11 to 12 from gender and, you know, being different to like knowing that there was something like about my girlfriends that I liked more than I liked about my boyfriends. I remember really clearly it starting the summer before seventh grade. We spent a lot of time at my aunt and uncle's neighborhood pool and that was when I remember suddenly girls looked different to me. And there was a particular group of girls who made me feel really afraid. I was really tortured and I also really internalized what I was going through right away because middle school was when we started doing the locker room and changing and yeah. I felt like I was in the wrong place. We were teenagers in the 1990s and that would have been when our own identity politics started to take shape. Anita Franco was really popular at that time and it was a big deal that she was identifying as bisexual. Well, mom loved Melissa Etheridge yes. and we knew she was gay. I remember when Katie Lang and Cindy Crawford were on the cover of Vanity Fair. It just really resonated with me. I remember thinking that Katie Lang was kind of like my role model for sexuality because she got to be androgynous and cool, but very beautiful and got the girl. I remember there being a rumor about a couple of the popular girls having made out. And I remember this excited me. I was like, girls can make out with each other. <laughs> I was so excited that I couldn't wait. We knew adults who were gay. It wasn't completely groundbreaking to us that someone would be gay. But to be a teenager and be gay, well, we didn't really know any. I was in a very shut down place until about ninth grade. And that was when I started having my first relationship with a girl. And then it was like different universe. Sarah really was so more ahead than I was. She got to her feelings of gayness quicker than I did. I sort of had suspicions that something was going on and that Sarah was having a relationship with a girl. I remember breaking into her room and she like wrote in this journal and like finding it and us like beating the crap out of each other. It wasn't us fighting because I was upset she was gay. It was just feeling such intense happiness that this was an option, you know, but also intense fear that someone would find out. Also this incredible loss. This was like my sister and my best friend. And all of a sudden I wasn't a part of that. There is this twin thing where it's like, you don't want to be the same. I didn't want to be like, well, I'm gay too, and have everyone be like, you're just saying that because she's your twin. So there was a part of me that kind of had to shelve my feelings for a while. I had a girlfriend who was spending all her time at my, my place. My mother started to ask questions and finally just was like, are you dating this person? And I said, yes. I was really surprised by her reaction. She was really disappointed incredibly uncomfortable, didn't want my girlfriend over anymore. I mean, we had heated arguments. You know, she really struggled. Sarah took the first, you know, blast. And that affects you as a gay person when who's supposed to be your biggest ally doesn't necessarily jump on board right away. It was really hard. She really became a phenomenal ally and a wonderful woman and has been endlessly supportive since then. And not just for us, but for many teenagers and for friends and, and people in her community. But at the time, my mom was about to send her children off into the world as, a, you know, as gay adults, and I think that she just freaked out. You know, truthfully, that was one of the more potent times for me musically. I just drove everything I had emotionally into what was then a hobby, but really was obviously just about to become my profession. I think as we got deeper into our 20s, we started to see the uh, the opportunity. Everything was sort of coming together for us in our 20s where we realized 
wow, now we can be both a pop band and we can be a political band. We were like, okay, like, let's get behind the big guns here. Like, let's make some change. Like, I want to see this stuff before I'm dead. I don't think our music is eradicating ignorance and homophobia or sexism. I think it's just helping people come a little bit further, you know, over the line to understanding. I choose to be a visible minority every day. I come out every day. I actively look for ways now to talk about who I am because I want to live as openly as I can, but I also want to inspire those who living and being themselves is a tremendous effort and takes a tremendous amount of courage. Can you come a little closer? Hey everybody, we're Tegan and Sarah. And we are in Palm Springs celebrating Dinah Shore. It's a big gay weekend. It's a huge gay weekend. It's a gay deal. It's a big gay deal. <laughs> and we are the gayest of all the gays, and we're here to celebrate this gay stuff. I hope our next generations aren't going to struggle the way that we have over when and how and who to come out to. You're in a spot where it's going to be dangerous, or it's going to your parents are going to cut you off and not pay for your education, or wait. Wait until the right time, you know, but don't wait your whole life. Don't wait away your life. I got to be the second one to come out. It was like a new Oh, my mom bought Tegan a couch and moved Didn't even care. She was daughter. like, is that girl your, is Polly your girlfriend? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, wow. And then like, I was like, I'm going to move to Vancouver. We'd been dating like three months. My mom flew in, bought me a couch. She was awesome. I never had to do anything. I didn't even have to come out. She just asked me. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs>